By the end of this video, I will have systematically dismantled the fallacy that higher hertz equals a better experience, confirming that there is no perceivable difference to the human eye beyond 60 FPS. And I have GIFs to prove it. Take that, big monitor. <laughs> All right, now, while that's obviously a joke, well, maybe not to everyone. <sighs> Playing at a high FPS is the single biggest upgrade you can make in gaming. Not only does it look way, way better than 30 FPS, but it affects how you perform in game as well. Sometimes in ways you may not expect. But what does that mean in terms of real world results, everyday gaming? Well, that's what we're gonna break down in this video. With slow motion footage captured at 800 FPS, and the results of a study featuring 1.8 million gamers. The difference between 60 Hertz and high Hertz is absolutely insane. It really does make 60 FPS feel like 30 FPS. So even if you can only hit 100 FPS on your 144 Hertz display, you're still gonna feel that. And since it's sending so much more data per second, with 240 Hertz updating every 4.1 milliseconds and 60 Hertz only every 16.6, that's gonna help you a lot with tracking hitboxes. Sure, we all know higher Hertz is smoother than 60 Hertz, but there's a lot more that makes playing at a higher FPS a game changer. So this video is gonna be about three main things. We're gonna demonstrate how and why they're superior and what that means in terms of real world gaming benefits. We're going to compare and contrast 60, 144, and 240 FPS and how their performance differs from one another. Answering questions like, is 240 Hertz worth it over 144? Plus, we're gonna get into what high frame rate monitors change outside of higher frame rates. And all of this is getting more accessible as well, which I think is important since higher frame rates feel like the new standard. And as they become the new standard, they're only getting cheaper. You can get a quality 1 millisecond 144Hz 1080p G-Sync or FreeSync display starting at 150 bucks, And an RTX 2060 Super, which is around 400 bucks or less if you're patient, will run games like Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, or Fortnite at max settings 144fps 1080p easily. And games like Battlefield 5 and Apex Legends at 144fps 1080p with some tweaks, but pretty high settings. But if you already have a decent GPU, there is a lot you can do to maximize your game's performance to increase FPS, thereby maximizing your performance in-game. Basically, more FPS means less between you and the game, and it's a whole lot easier to hit whatever your potential is. Before we begin, I'd like to give a special thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video and letting me interview Gerardo Delgado. He works with NVIDIA's research labs as well as esports studios and pro streamers. He was able to give me some deeper insights on a large study that NVIDIA ran on how higher frame rates affect player performance. They collected data points from 1.8 million gamers across six months. And I think you'll be as surprised as I was by some of the results of this study. They also sent me 600 gigabytes of raw footage captured at 800 FPS by the Phantom Miro M120. A slow motion camera that's worth more than the street value of all my internal organs combined. So, two common misconceptions I see about high FPS gaming is 1. It makes you a better player. And B. Only pros benefit from a high hertz display. And both are... Factually incorrect. I would even argue that going from 30 FPS to 60 FPS doesn't make you a better player. It just makes you sane. <laughs> no, uh, it, it just, it doesn't impede you like the lower refresh rate did. Does removing a sea of Legos from the floor make you a better walker? No, you didn't get any better at walking, it's just easier to walk. Something that I've found lacking in many blind A-B tests to figure out if high or low FPS affects your in-game performance is that they don't usually take into account time. Gerardo Delgado talked about some in-house tests that they ran for a month with eight different gamers, and what's key is that apparently the results changed dramatically over the first two weeks just because they got accustomed to one condition or the other, which I found pretty interesting. Before I start comparing the high hertz themselves, let's talk about a feature that is, in many ways, just as important for improving your gaming performance. FPS is the number of frames per second your GPU can render. The refresh rate, or hertz, of your monitor determines how many of them can be displayed per second. Simple enough, you're getting a solid 60 FPS on your 60 hertz monitor. Is that right? Nope! Since monitors have fixed refresh rates and GPUs have variable refresh rates, you'll have mismatched frames which cause artifacts like tearing. 
where you'll see part of the last frame and part of the current frame at the same time. V-Sync eliminates tearing by locking your GPU's output to match your monitor's refresh rate, but it causes input delay, which is why for competitive games like Battle Royales, Rainbow Six Siege, and other shooters, many gamers choose to play without V-Sync. V-Sync can also stutter if your frames take the slightest dip. Sometimes you'll continue to get stuttering even if your in-game FPS counter shows a stable 60 FPS. What people call lag in games often isn't lag at all, but stuttering caused by frame latency. Which, if you don't know what that is, can be frustrating because why am I stuttering at 60 FPS? The solution to all that is adaptive sync. G-Sync and FreeSync match your monitor's refresh rate to your GPU's render rate, fixing the uneven frame problem and thus tearing, stuttering, and input lag issues. So even if your graphics card can't hit your monitor's maximum refresh rate, let's say it's 144 FPS, and you can only hit 100 FPS, that's not a problem. You'll definitely still see the benefits of a higher frame rate, and you won't get tearing, stuttering, or input lag. Which is why I recommend getting 144 or 240Hz monitors instead of 120. Not only to future-proof yourself, but monitors can last a long time. I mean, a monitor that came out all the way back in 2015 is still considered the best 1440p 144Hz display. Something else that's pretty big is that you can now use many FreeSync displays with NVIDIA GPUs. We are going to test all the adaptive sync monitors out there. And the ones that pass our test for visual quality and performance and experience, we are going to call those G-Sync compatible. And we will enable those G-Sync compatible monitors automatically in our driver. We're not done yet. We've only tested about 400. Just 400. Just yeah. 400. So we've got another 150 or 160 to go. And the great news is that if we haven't tested your monitor yet, you can go into the control panel and turn it on yourself. Just so, see if it works. Just see if it works. I'll have a link down in the description to the official list. So that's one huge advantage that high frame rate displays have, adaptive sync technology. Less input lag is always critical. There's a lot that happens between the actions you make and their corresponding reactions in game. So when Nvidia's study had shown that more power equals less input latency, and in a similar vein that a higher refresh rate means less obstacles between you and the game, I wasn't too surprised that those things have an effect on a gamer's performance. But what genuinely surprised me was that resolution doesn't seem to really register much of a difference in gamer performance. This is actually great news if you don't mind things being a little less pretty because it's a whole hell of a lot cheaper for cost and performance and it gives you the same gameplay benefits. However, across 1.8 million gamers, there still wasn't enough data to say one way or the other if ultra wide made a difference in gamer performance. At 60 hertz, your image is refreshing 60 times a second, or every 16.6 .6 milliseconds. That's how long it takes your display to send you the data of an enemy's location. That sounds pretty good. Sure, Jan. But it's not. There's a lot missing here, as you can see. He's still moving the whole time in the game. You just can't see all that on your monitor because you're missing data. At 240 hertz, it's refreshing 240 times a second, or every 4.1 milliseconds. It's so much smoother, it's ridiculous. 144 hertz is enough to make 60 FPS look like 30 FPS. You don't even need game footage to see that. I wasn't able to take this with a 800 FPS camera, but you can see that there's far more updates with the 144 hertz monitor than the 60 hertz monitor. I've never met anybody that prefers 60 hertz. Some people may prefer 4K, even if it's at 60 FPS, but not from a gameplay perspective or even a mouse using perspective. Here you can clearly see there's some missing visual information between the two frame rates. Information you may not fully appreciate consciously, but your brain does. It makes it easier to track, easier to anticipate. This is why you can see him sooner at 240 hertz than you could at 60 hertz. Does this mean you're gonna execute a pro gamer move and shoot him here? Probably not, unless you're a pro gamer. But it does wonders for tracking. The less redundant processes you need to pay attention to, the better. And I do mean pay attention. You only have so much of it. Please forgive. Too many mind. Too many mind? Hi. Mind the sword. Mind the people, what? 
Mind enemy. Too many mind. No mind. No mind. It's an idea called motion. But if you don't want to be a weeb about it, the less subconsciously you have to anticipate, the less gaps for you to fill, the more connected you are to the game. Automation, I guess you could say. These machines are taking away jobs your brain used to have. It's not necessarily about spotting an enemy sooner, although that is nice, but more the fact that where the enemy is is always shown. It's just one less thing between your brain and the game. As for 240 hertz versus 144 hertz, there are diminishing returns, but when you're advancing from 60 hertz, how could there not be? But there's definitely a difference. You can see here that there's a surprising contrast between 144 and 240 hertz, as they're both frozen on a ghost, but 144 hertz is clearly more visible. And of course, you do get a little more data in terms of frames, with 144 giving you a new image every 6.9 milliseconds, and 240, 4.1 milliseconds. Again, time comes into play here. It's way easier to notice its absence than its presence. Once you get used to 240 hertz, you will notice a difference going back to 144. Just as you'd notice a difference going back to 60 from 144, albeit less pronounced. Which is why blind tests aren't really the best judge. The brain is a muscle, and we are creatures of habit. But that's not all there is to consider. A monitor shows a series of images which are constantly refreshing one after the other. When one image is on the screen and it changes to the next, for a few milliseconds the previous image is still present. On a monitor with a slower response time, this is very noticeable because after changing to the next frame, it's still processing the color change of pixels. Basically, slower response time means the display is slower, shifting to new images, and it looks blurry. Lower response times cut down on vestiges of previous images, aka ghosting. So you generally want a response time under 4 milliseconds. The closer to 1, the better. Now, don't necessarily view this as, well, only the pros need 1 millisecond. Will pros get more out of it? Yes, but you won't get any less out of it. That sounds like a distinction without a difference, but everyone's eyes are different, and that blur can impact the effectiveness of your hertz. The higher your hertz and the lower your response time, the cleaner and more accurate your image is. Depending on the games you play, 1440p may not be a step up from 1080p. It looks nicer, yeah, but it doesn't really give you any benefits outside of creature comforts like graphics. And if you care about some really slick looking graphics, 1440p 144Hz is what most people would be happy with. It needs more power to run than a high Hz 1080p display, but less power than a 60Hz 4K display, so you get improved visuals and more frames in excellent balance. Personally, I'm a big fan of HDR, 4K, graphics, and games looking as realistic as possible. But for the past three and a half years, I've been using a 144Hz G-Sync display for most of my PC gaming needs. I'll hook up my PC to my 4K television when I'm playing single-player games, but for multiplayer games, there really is no substitute for high frame rates. Thanks again to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys found it helpful or entertaining. And if you stuck around until the end, <laughs> thank you for watching and leave a comment below. I'd be interested to know if you prefer a higher frame rate or a higher resolution. And if you do have a high hertz display, what graphics card are you using with it? Anyway, thanks again, guys. If you enjoyed this video, I have some other journalistic styled videos on Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Remnant from the Ashes, and more. I'll have those on screen now. But until next time, game massively.